Hello and welcome to the Educators Going Global podcast. This episode was recorded on July 4th, 2022. Our guiding question as we begin our getting personal topic is that we're asking what are some personal considerations and ramifications to think about when going global? I'm going to start by sharing a related going global story. My son was born in Saudi Arabia and my parents came to visit and to meet him and they stayed a couple of weeks. And then the day they were leaving, my mom was holding my son in her arms and she said, oh, there's going to be a little hole in our lives after we leave. And of course, I felt terrible that we weren't closer to them. But in actuality, they live thousands of miles away from us within even within Canada. And uh, so even if we had been living back so-called home, we might not see them that much anyhow. And of course, there was the bright side that we get more concentrated visiting time during the summer months. And also for the silver lining for my parents, they visited us in every country we lived in. So their travel horizons were expanded immeasurably by our travel. So I'm going to build off of that one and share the whole idea of we're talking about stretching ourselves, but here's a great example of stretching one's family. So when you start going around the world working and, and teaching and living, you open up exploration opportunities for your family. So that's a great consideration as well. On the, the, the kind of negative side, yes, is the idea that you might be away from your aging parents that might need some support and care, grandparents who want to be with their grandkids. Of course, that's a concern. There's also the general just missing out also on extended family, cousins, uncles, aunts. And one of the big things I've noticed being back in the U.S. this year is just the vibrance of local community connections that you could miss out on. So the other thing to think about, there's definitely the big positive side for kids going to international schools, but it is quite an event for uprooting kids and taking them out of their schools and going overseas. And you also need to think about if you have a non-working or non-educator trailing spouse, what will their needs, what will the new situation be like for them? There is the question of whether the school can accommodate your child's uh, needs if there are special needs, and we are going to take a deeper dive on that one. Generally, maximum of two kids get their tuition fully paid. After that, it's, it's a portion that's paid. There's also consideration of whether your children will be academically challenged if your new school doesn't have its curriculum and academic programs fully in place. Another consideration, what will you do if you own a home? Will you sell it? Will you try to rent it out while you're gone? It's hard to rent from September through June. We've done it personally ourselves. We've been really lucky with that, but not everyone's able to do that. Where will you stay in the summertime if you've rented out your home? Will you go couch surfing among friends and family? That can be really challenging, especially if you have young kids. Making a home base in your home country of moving from the couch to renting a summer cottage to family friends coming to you and you buy a place of your own. The value as well of having a community back home for the children to connect to during summer breaks is a big factor to ponder. So if you are going to establish yourself somewhere for the summer, think about what the community there would be like for you and your kids. And connected to that is the cultural adjustment of, of, of course, going overseas, new jobs and new culture that can take from six months to a year. And Audie brings up a really good point. There also is the coming back into your home culture is something that you'll need to be aware of. Yeah, it's something called reverse culture shock. Being in a new country, you may be faced with new country new home, new language to learn sometimes, new school with different curricula than you're used to, new culture, all at once. And that can be a real challenge. One of the things to keep in mind, and we're going to have uh, recruiting agency folks come on, but many schools do prefer teaching couples, as we are going to share in depth with our financial um, discussion with a subject matter expert, many schools do not have a retirement benefit. There can be some form of one, but maybe not what you're used to. It is the very rare exception to find schools that pay into the U.S. Social Security system. So know that you will not be contributing towards that retirement system if you're an American. Age can also be a factor. My husband and I discovered this when we wanted to go to Europe and we sort of saved it till the end because 
as we'll learn in other episodes, the schools in Europe don't pay as much and they don't provide housing. But he was heading towards the upper end of 50 at the time. And a lot of countries don't give expat visas at, you know, after the age of 55. It can be a real issue uh, as you're looking to recruit. There are also obviously some countries where there are concerns for personal safety and also the safety of your property. So those are some things to also keep in mind as you're looking at different schools. So as usual, we offer the disclaimer that we don't have all the answers. We're just covering the surface here. Our thought is to list these factors out for you and then to circle back to them later on with subject matter experts as our partners in future podcasts. So thanks for joining us on the Educators Going Global podcast. There are many considerations to think about in going global. Look to create your own list of criteria as you design your action plan to become an international educator. Thank you for joining us today on Educators Going Global. You can find this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and all the other usual suspects. Please subscribe, like us, and leave a review on Apple and Spotify, and let your teaching friends know about us so we can grow our community. Please reach out at educatorsgoingglobal at gmail.com And join our Facebook group, Educators Going Global, if you have ideas, comments, or wish to share a going global story of your own. You can also find us on Instagram at Educators Going Global. Please visit our website as well, www.educatorsgoingglobal.com. All our podcast episodes are on there by topic, along with blog posts, going global stories, and our ever-growing resource library. For now, this is Audrey and David, inviting you to travel, teach, and connect with us.